Welcome to Red 35. Today we have a special guest. Thank you. Yes, it's right here, a brand new Olympus camera. Oh, and Soha as well. Zoha, yeah. today I have a present for you. Let's open it and tell me what it says on the badge. EM1 Mark III. There you go, we got it finally. Yes, this is the brand new Olympus OMD EM1 Mark III. A very long name and very mouthful, but I can tell you that this is a great camera. Let me tell you a little bit about the Mark II. You know, you've yeah. probably seen Tracy and I using it a lot because Without the Mark II camera, this channel wouldn't exist because we film everything right mm -hmm. from the beginning I can with, see the, it. with the Mark II <laughs> that Trace is using right now. Yep. And then, uh, and me personally, I have switched from Canon to Olympus also because of the Mark II camera. So this is actually, uh, to me, a very um, uh, monumental camera. You know, because for as a for a profession to change once from one system to another um, yeah, is a is huge. a big is a big thing. So like, uh, I love the camera. I love the Mark II. And having tried the Mark III, I can tell you that this is pretty awesome. You're impressed. I'm very impressed. Let's see. <laughs> if you guys have been following us closer, you know that we release a uh, end of term review for the Mark II mm -hmm. because my Mark II personally, my Mark II is almost dying because I used it so much it just basically I yeah. wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't put 100% of my confidence in it anymore because it's, it, you know when you use something so much like a high mileage mm. car for instance and you know the engine's gonna it may break down at some point so, so like, as a professional, you don't know when it's gonna happen but it's gonna happen exactly so uh, so you don't want to risk it when you're a professional you want to go out yeah. with confidence you know rely on your gear things like that so this is my current workhorse this mm -hmm. is as you know that this is a giant camera this is the Olympus EM1X the flagship of flagship that's how they call it it's an X for extra large it's X factor oh, okay yeah no it's a it's a beast I mean I have to say you know that this is a really cool thing I've been using for a year now and uh, it just hasn't let me down it's really cool but I'm not talking about this of course this is about the latest mark 3 but the reason I'm bringing it out because if you're looking at this and put it in a wash and a tumble dryer in high heat this is the result <laughs> basically I was like don't do that don't say that <laughs> Uh, I, I'm pretty sure it will survive somehow, you know, I think the, the Olympus camera are very known for their weather sealing. Don't try this at home. But not high heat actually, no. So yeah, don't try that at home. So you just, so it's a shrink. Basically it's basically. shrink, it's shrinking from this to this. Um, there is still a little bit of differences we're going to talk about in a minute, but let's, let's go through some of the things that is common or very similar to the Mark II. Mm -hmm. First of all is the body shape. Now you can have a look at it. it you can kind of see it's almost identical to the Mark II. Yeah. In fact, it's so close to the fact that you, if you look at or have a glance of it, you probably wouldn't even notice this is a new model. Mm. Um, but when you hold it closer, you find that the grip is actually slightly narrower, slightly more pronounced, so you will feel it uh, uh, a little bit better, I think, in the hand. Mm. I mean, that's how I feel it. I think it's just like a small um, evolution. Yeah, of the camera body, so it, is, it certainly feels a little bit better. And also in terms of button layouts and things like that, yes, there is some differences here as well because now you have a full custom mode here and also a dedicated B mode for your long yeah. exposure fans. There, you know, if you look like to do long exposure like live com, live bulb, and that sort of thing, and that's pretty cool. And also they have a dedicated ISO button which you can now change the uh, sensitivity of the sensor very easily with one button previously you have to do it super uh, via the super control panel oh wow or having uh, the yeah or customize one of these buttons to do the same thing but now it has a dedicated thing so which is a good thing nice. so very handy it's also on the right high around right hand side so you can easily do a one hand mm. action there which is quite cool and this is the big thing now in terms of layout now it has a nipple <laughs> right. the mark uh, the one x has two nipples and then um uh, which is more humane. The Olympus now has only given one nipple. And <laughs> 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 you, you, you 
20 minutes later. Okay. The nipple is good. The nipple is good, yes. And uh, so you can select the focusing point with ease during shooting, like for photos, uh, for both photos and videos. And I'm not joking because I love that feature on the M1X. I know some other manufacturer has it, and uh, but Olympus has a little bit of a trick on this leaf when it comes to the nipple action because uh, most of the nipples on the market. You can only, I didn't laugh this time, it was him. You, you can only do like uh, like up and up down and, and horizontally. Yeah. But the Olympus one can do diagonally. Ah. So which is actually pretty cool because if you want to move, let's say, from one corner to another, instead of screwing through like down, horizontally and, and down, yeah. you can actually go diagonally. Oh, which is uh, very, very good for uh, photographers or filmmakers who would like to change focusing points very, very efficient. quickly. Yeah. Yes, so you can actually move any direction you want, so it's a very effective tool. Um, then, um, But other than that, it, it looks almost identical. This, this I so I kept looking at the one that we're using, which is Mark II, and I couldn't tell it. Yeah, in fact, if I chuck it on the street, no one would notice it. Okay, please don't chuck it on the street. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, actually, I didn't mention about the nipple. So, yes, because of the nipple, the menu button has moved from where it was to now on the left-hand side now. Ah. So I think physically that the difference but the, you might, but that's, might see. But it's easier for the nipple to be on this side then. Yes, because, because you can see like you, if you're right-handed, well actually most of the grips are on the right-hand side. So yeah, yeah you'll, you'll be able to use one-handed action. Mm. So you can shoot, change and change uh, the focusing point, uh, shoot it, like all the ISO, everything's one hand, mm -hmm. which is pretty good. So it makes sense for it to be there. However, menu button is also very important. Mm. You know, I kind of, would miss it. I kind of, I kind of there? miss it. The, the menu button is actually somewhere on here. Mm. But obviously, it's quite cram. I can see here. There's no more space for putting the. If you could exchange one button for the menu button, which one would you want to put there? The uh, auto focusing lock mm. button. Change it yeah. to menu. But you can customize it. Okay. But so that button can do what you want it to do. You can you can do it. Yeah. But I I, I just kind of think that it should be somewhere around here. Mm. So you can still using one hand. Just yeah. kind of miss that. Yeah. So now, if I want to change, let's say something slightly more in depth, like in, in the menus, mm. I have to use my left hand to press the menu mm. button, and uh, that may not be a problem if you don't have the screen flipped out, because once it's flipped out, you see, like it's actually kind of in the yeah. way. And uh, but other than that, it's, it's it's okay. You know, you just have to get used to it or customize one of the buttons to do the same thing. Mm. Uh, but overall, you know, as a speedy photographer, most likely you have the settings set up already for the shoot, so you don't really have to go through the menu that often. That's that, true. That's, that's my take anyway. That's true. Uh, but yeah, there will be cases when you will have to use the menu button and to scroll through something, find a specific mode that you want to set up. Mm. And uh, well, so, you should be ready for it anyway. Yeah, you should be. Mm. But anyway, okay. that's kind of my thing because I I do. Re kind of missed the menu button on the right hand side. You're very used to it though. But now I have the nip nipple, so it's fine. Yeah, you're very used to it. Nipple, you like nipples. Nipple, I, I do like nipples. Now, built quality. As you know, this is a professional camera and this is how Olympus label this camera is for professional. Of course, anybody can use it, but it has a professional built body, fully metal, fully weather sealed. In fact, it's so good it has the same weather sealing as the bigger brother, the One P, uh, the Ooh. One X, which is uh, IPX One, One, which is good. So that means that you can now have a shower with the camera if it gets do dirty. Or if you want some steamy scenes in a shower room or something like that, you don't have to worry about the camera because it will survive. Not so sure about the memory card, so you make sure that you have a proper rugged memory card installed. Why do I feel like you're speaking of experience? <sighs> okay. Just... I'm a professional, of course. I do all kinds of photo shoots. Hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so it is very good and uh, as demonstrated before, the Mark II has proven itself to be super reliable. I've dropped it. Tracy's uh, thing is almost falling apart, she's so still using it. And uh, my one's literally half dead, you know, like everything was scrubbed off everywhere. So I'm pretty certain this one is going to survive for the next four years. Oh wow. And in fact, the, uh, the, another thing that's improved over the Mark II is now the shutter reliability. Because previously on the Mark II, it had, I think it has a shutter count. I don't know what you, you know about shutter counts. So you know the Not shutter much. basically flaps up and yeah, down yeah. to open and close to take, off, to, yeah, to take photos. So when you open it once, that's one action. Mm -hmm. So 
like anything mechanical, it has a certain life before it dies, basically. Yeah, just like an engine of the car, mm -hmm. you know, you go through several mileage and then we just basically eventually would go. So the Mark II has, I think, was about 150, 200,000 actuations. Let's see how many times it how can flap up and down, down and then before it dies. And this one now it has 400,000, which means oh, that wow. even if a super pro that takes like lots and lots of photo, it will survive. And that means it could possibly survive longer than four years until the next model, maybe the, even the next model after that. Yeah. You can still use That's the very good. camera. Uh, so this is a very, very good thing to know. As you probably guessed by now, that I shoot absolute tons of photos every single year. And uh, my Mark II had about 250,000 uh, oh. kind of mileage on the on, on the camera itself so uh, I, that's why i say you know i had to leave it at home now i don't use that one because it may not be as real might as not like, yeah. work the whole day so uh, now i know that this guy even if i shoot the same amount of photos this would probably still be only halfway through his cycle mm -hmm. you know by the end of it so it, it's definitely proven itself to be very very good um and i think other than that it's, it's just very very similar you know like i mentioned it, it physically there's not much changes from it and that's a good thing because you feel like you're still in your comfort zone if yeah you're used to the mark ii and you enjoyed using it yeah you know? oh yeah that's one more thing olympus also invented something you know and um, the way back when they first started this mirrorless thing is the uh, the uh self-cleaning thing that's how i normally explain to people you know when you open up the camera you yeah. can see the sensor yeah so like you know people always worry about dust and sand getting mm -hmm. trapped in it and eventually you, you will result in some sort of dark spots in, in the photos yeah. which is kind of annoying when it comes to processing you always see these dots mm. in, in, in the sensor and you have to kind of physically edit them out yeah Olympus started this kind of self-cleaning so every time you turn on the camera it will shake itself trying to shake off the dust oh, so they started this clever. many many years ago but since the EM1 uh, X the one that I had to show you the bigger brother yeah, yeah. so it, they invented something called the supersonic wave filter that's mm. in front of the uh, sensor itself so it has special coating and also shakes 30,000 like times in a second to trying to get rid of everything like literally everything including moisture oh. on the, on the sensor yeah, well, itself it's... so which is actually pretty cool they up the game again so this is even better than the bigger brother so apparently they put on a, uh, a new coating in front of it so make sure that nothing sticks on it so that means that i can actually do that now and spit on it and like wave it around in dust in situation and turn, I turn, it, on, it, and it'll turn it on it'll be fine should I do that? No. 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 This is a test camera. I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> anyway, uh, so it, that's what they so claim, and uh, I do believe them because I, since the Mark II and the One X, I have been changing my lenses in very dusty situations, mm. as you can. I thought you were going to say I've been spitting on my lenses a lot since then. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from cleaning, it sometimes yes, I do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, as a location shooter, you know, like you, yeah. I do change my lens. You know, doesn't matter what situation it is. Fog. So. Yeah, um, having having a system like that, that means that I don't have to worry about it too much. Mm. So uh, I, I do like basically really do this a lot in, mm. in location. Like now today it's not windy at all, so it's no. I, I actually don't have to worry about it. Mm. But even with very sandy, very dusty, I know it, it will survive. So that is a very good thing to have. And couple with the pro lenses, you know, all the pro lenses actually seal at the back as well. Mm. So that means that nothing will get trapped in. in either way. So uh, make sure your Just system like a, is... In case it does, but it shouldn't really. Yeah pretty much so that is very very good that's very good so uh, this is why this is a prof professional camera thanks for the gift it's a really good gift to me i'll run away with it now <laughs> you're attached to me damn <laughs> damn i can't run away <laughs>a professional camera performance is definitely key key yes and uh, you might wonder what has improved over the last four years or well, kind of almost four years so three and a half years yeah so it's, it's quite a lot so i can tell you now it has a brand new processor 
This is the TruePick 9, not the TruePick 8 anymore. So it's actually very, very powerful because it can do a lot of the things that the M1X, the bigger brother, could do, such as now you can have live ND, which means that it's a digital neutral density filters that we kind of kind of uh, talked okay. about a little bit. Yeah. And so you can do slow motion effect in camera without having to actually physically put a uh, put a, a filter on. Mm -hmm. Handheld high res, which is absolutely cool. So now, instead of uh, having the native 20 megapixel file, you can now have it in handheld high res, which means you can produce a 50 megapixel file. So you can see all the defects on the skin. So that may not be so good for some shoots. What are you trying to say about me? I'm not saying to you. I'm saying to the audience. Okay. Be careful what you shoot using that mode. And of course, it has a 80 megapixel tripod high res mode as mm. well so which is actually pretty cool um so all in all it's a very cool and there's one new feature that even the m1x hasn't got oh wow it's called the starry sky and uh yeah i haven't personally tried it because in england as you know that we don't have a clear sky <laughs> we have too much light pollution so i can't even see the skies or the stars or anything like that so yeah. it will be very it's a lot of sadness very, in the sky <laughs> <laughs> yeah, clouds and sadness. And, uh, so Lost that, dreams, that's so where they go. I think, I think I have to kind of reserve my judgment or my verdict on that particular mode because I can't try it in England. Oh, or I have to go somewhere quite too. remote. Have a trip to Norway. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Later on, I'll report back if I do find somewhere yeah. that's dark enough to that's see the skies. Exciting. Yeah, that would be quite cool. Because so, I've never been able to take a picture of the sky and it really upsets me. Ah, there you go. So this mode, surprisingly, mm. it will use some sort of new uh, autofocus algorithm to help you pinpoint the sky or the star that you want to focus on. Yeah. You know, most of the astrophotographers, they have to use manual focus. They can't see the sky that well, so they have to yeah. punch in, magnify and manual focus and make sure the skies are pin sharp. Mm. But with the new AF system, it will try to look for those stars and try and make, make sure that it will be stay in focus. So this is what it's supposed to do. Uh, don't quote me on that because I have limited experience with that. So, uh, But other than that, another improvement also better than the EM1X at the moment is the um, brand new uh, face priority or face and eye priority portrait mode. Oh. In fact, it's automatically enabled when you uh, turn on the face and eye detection on. So what it means now, it can track faces like it before, but more sophisticated. So you can now step away from the frame, even like your face are quite small, it will still see then track it which means it's apparently could pretty good. When you get close enough, it will start tracking the eyes as well. We so should it, try that. Yeah, it's, it's actually pretty good. We're going to do a live demo in a minute. Yeah. I will be the demo, she will be the photographer. So, the, so you can see how easy this thing can do and how accurate it is. So I think I can tell you that it's actually pretty amazing. I think we should run around. Not just photos though, video is the same thing, which mm. is very, very good um, for people who are filming themselves. For instance, yep. you know, and uh, you can kind of s imagine a scenario because you can just flip the screen, tracking on, and you can just walk around the frame, and everything will be pinched up in focus. That's pretty good. So uh, we kind of not need Tracy for that. Uh, let's not say that. Sorry. We need you. Sorry, Tracy. Yeah, we do need you. <laughs> He's um, very mean today. He didn't need me. He doesn't need you. What? What? what, what I wasn't mean to you. You did not welcome me. You're oh. like, we have a special guest, and it was the camera. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so um, so that was good. That was uh, that's something new. Something that it hasn't got from the Big Brother is the uh, kind of like the AI tracking or AI recognition. Mm. The A1X can recognize trains, planes, and car drivers and things like that. This one hasn't got it. So I guess Olympus has some, set something apart from the Big Brother to this one. Yeah, I was gonna say that's something that sets them apart. But also, do you use that a lot? Uh, or would you be tracking faces uh, more? The thing is, I don't shoot planes or train or cars, so guys get yeah. not. But you never yeah. know, because AI tracking, they're going to expand the, uh, the the modes in the future, so you might include human faces, mm. other things as well. Yeah. So you never know, so uh, I'll leave that until future to future days to, to judge it. Another um, four years. Yeah, another four years. <laughs> and uh, uh, it uses the same batteries as the E1 Mark II, which is a good thing, so you already have the Mark II and want to upgrade a very pers pers um, logical choice, because you probably have invested a bunch of batteries already which is mm. fully compatible with that and also the grip hl9 H H D H L D 9 hld9 i never kind of understand the naming conventions there but it's anyways. cool it sounds like a robot i like it <laughs> so but it is fully compatible so you have the grip from the mark ii uh -huh. it will fit with this as well which is pretty good 
Uh, there are other things I haven't mentioned, I will just kind of briefly touch base on. Mm -hmm. uh, it does have uh, some sort of uh, syncing with the external audio recorder, the LSP4. Mm -hmm. So once you plug into it, it will enable the, uh, the LSP4 to have a beep sound, so it can actually sync the sound in post a lot easier mm -hmm. if you want to do that. And, uh, so I personally haven't tried it because the LSP4 firmware update is not available as we recording yeah. this yet. Uh, it will be released when this is launched. So uh, yeah, you're going to have... Soon? Yeah, very soon, soon, very soon. Stay tuned. No, Stay actually, tuned. by the time you watch this, it's already launched. Yeah, that's what are you true, about? <laughs> Anyway, um, so yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on with the Mark II here. So the new processor, faster speed. I haven't even mentioned about Pro Capture, which uh, is also, again, shooting much bigger, uh, so much faster, but a bigger buffer than the Mark II as well. So it's actually um, a big leap from the Mark II. Showing off Don't wanna have to wait tonight Wait tonight Better off I'm gonna find my way tonight Wait tonight Oh, one more thing It's pretty cool you know, um, it has a very cool tracking already I told you about the faces and things, but it now can detect multiple faces. Yes, like, I mean, uh, Ooh. yeah, pretty much. So you've got these boxes that highlight the faces. And it can work on multiple. Yeah, no, basically it recognizes all the faces in the scene and then you can select which one you want to focus on, which is actually pretty cool, especially in filming, for instance, because uh, let's say you want to track a particular actor yeah. on the scene and then uh, you can just on the face so and, it, and, it, on and even though there are people next to them and it will continue tracking only one face so that means that he or she can walk in and out while the other station is so you can maintain focus especially useful when you have shallow depth of field so like other things can be blurred out a little yeah, bit yeah, yeah. so that is like a crowd walking through the crowd scene yeah that is pretty cool isn't it i think i think it's a very useful feature and in photos it works the same way so like let's say at a wedding you've got a lot of people you just want to focus on the bride or the groom uh -huh. and just Poke on the face again. And if you don't like one of the people there at the wedding, you can just yeah. So it works uh, either using the touch screen on the on the back screen here, mm -hmm. or you can uh, basically configure the camera so you can use one of the buttons to select. So you can scroll through faces mm -hmm. using the using the dial using the wheel dial here. It's pretty good. Family Is portrait time. Pretty good. Nice. Yes, you can select the family member you don't, don't want to like. be in focus. No, I don't want to be all of them in focus, just one. Just, just one. me, just, just me. <laughs> yeah, you know when people zoom into family photos just to see if they look okay? Just tap yourself. Yes, yes. But you can only do one, one face at a time. Don't need any more faces, just mine. Yeah, if you want everything in focus, just stop it down. But yeah, it, it does it. Now we do the demo of the video tracking. So now it has the face detection on. So you should highlight both of our faces, but the focus is locked on Zoha's face. So if, no matter what I do, I won't be in focus because the focus is locked on Zoha's face. So I can move around. The camera might still see my face being highlighted and Zoha can move around and stay in focus. Awesome stuff. <laughs> Yay. Right. Right, I'm not joking because this USB is... USB charging. Slow motion. Slow motion. From the Mark II. Yeah, you know like the this thing has so much feature that I completely forgot what I'm going to talk about. Lucky you're here. Thank you, Zoha. You're welcome. Yes, it has USB charging, which is actually fantastic. And not only just normal USB charging, because it has USB fast charging. Oh. Because you know how big the battery is in this, uh, the, the yeah. Mark III or like the Mark II, for instance. Um, how long does it take to charge the normal battery without fast charging? Well, without fast charging, a big battery like it would take about three to four hours. And with the fast charging? Two hours. It's still not as fast as the dedicated charger. Uh, don't quote still me that. I don't have I don't have the official figure from the fast charger, mm, okay. uh, which will be included. But you can actually fast charge using USB C connection, which is mm -hmm. fantastic because everything USB C now. Yeah. And uh, you can charge a completely depleted battery in two hours, which is fantastic. So you have a power bank, uh, have a fast charging option. Mm -hmm. Plug in the USB uh, USB C cable into this camera, it will fully charge the whole thing in two hours. Nice. So that means in transit, you can fully charge the whole thing and ready for the next shoot. So if you forget to charge your camera at night and you wake up in a rush, you can be like, <gasps> charge it right there and you're ready. That's two right. hours, yes. done. And that will mean that because it comes with a charger, so where you go on location, for instance, you can have one plug into the wall mm -hmm. and one charging, so you can have two batteries charging at the same time. But also it's two hours to fully charge it. 
So yeah. if it's running low, absolutely top it up. Half an hour, you can still top it up and keep using it. Yep, yeah, absolutely. And also, yeah, having yeah, speaking of that, you can now also charging and using the camera at the same time. So oh. that means if you're doing, let's say, uh, uh, like the starry sky we we'll talk about, yeah, yeah. you know, like you're doing, doing ultra long exposure shot, like night, a three, yeah. four hours, whole night thing, yeah. putting on a tripod, you can now plug in and, and shoot charge and time. shoot at the same time. So which means that you have a big enough power bank, like one of those 25,000 milliamp <laughs> yeah. thing, you know, you can last all night. The ones that look like a car battery. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you can actually plug it in and yeah, shoot all night. And That's good for cool. good for time lapses. You know, some people do like extreme yeah. long time lapses, yep. and they are very very good for that. So one of the good thing about having the uh, brand new Trupic Nine processor is the increased performance on the uh, high ISO range. Mm. Um, well, at least from what I can see in the JPEG files it produces compared to the uh, older Mark II or the, even the EM5 Mark III and the EM1 X files. They're cleaner. They do look a little bit cleaner mm. and uh, maybe it's due to the new algorithm or the new compression engine, something is happening and then uh, it does look a little bit better. Although, having said that, as a professional, I don't use high ISO, you know, unless you are a creep and you're trying to see things in the dark, uh, which I don't. Yeah, which you don't really shoot. <laughs> but it will help a little bit when you shoot, uh, let's say, 3200 and 6400, for instance. And in those settings, they do look a little bit cleaner and less color cast. So that, that may not be a bad thing. I think it's a it's good overall improvement. Yeah. So for all of you video folks out there, let's talk about video. So in terms of feature, it's very, very similar to the Mark II with a few differences. Mm -hmm. First of all, it has a super slow-mo high-speed option. Now it shoots 120 frames per second in full HD, Ooh. which is pretty good. I mean, I know that you don't always overkill it by using it all the time, but it can be quite fun. And uh, well, interesting little addition. Yeah, to some it, you know, and uh, everything just look very slow. We can kind of do it myself, man. I was gonna say, we don't need the camera. That was pretty good. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know. But anyway, it has that option and uh, still has C, uh, C4K, Cine 4K and 24 frames per second in high bit rate, standard 4K, 24, 30, 25, 50, no, not 50, sorry, back my pardon. No, not like 50, no 60 either. And uh, 4HD in all kinds of frame rate and 720. I don't know who is still shooting 720. Okay, don't hate. I know people still It's do. an aesthetic, maybe, some, for someone. Right, anyway, so it has it. Uh, apart from that, it also uh, has the same um, autofocusing system, 121 point, cross mm -hmm. type, uh, face attack and contrast attack hybrid. Super accurate, super cool in any lighting situations. Coupled with the brand new AF that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. So now track faces really well. You can select faces and things like that, which is actually amazing. And uh, also the, uh, what is it? The focusing point, uh -huh. the nipple. Uh -huh. You can now- Play with it. <laughs> you can play with it while recording, which is actually pretty cool. Um, this is something that uh, only the EM1X can do it previously, mm -hmm. but now the EM1 Mark III can also do it, which mm. is actually fun. I do use that feature a lot because um, sometimes when you relying on the autofocus, because sometimes it can be quite useful, and uh, you while shooting, when you had hit the record button, you can move the focusing point, point it to somewhere else. Mm. It's just actually very, very it's good. It's very useful. Yeah, it's very useful because um, uh, if you're not very, uh, let's say confident using manual focus and relying on autofocus, that would be a very, very good thing to do. Because uh, previously uh, on the Mark II and the uh, EM5 Mark III and all the other models, you cannot change the focusing point once you start hitting the record button. Mm. So, uh, so it's pretty much fixed, unless you use manual focus, of course. But then, yeah, this new camera can do that automatically when you're moving the nipple. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. I love that feature just on its own. I think it's worth it. That's Definitely. brilliant. Definitely. We didn't laugh at a single time when we said nipple this time. No. We've grown up. <laughs> she's, gr us. she's grown up. Look at us being adults. <laughs> this is the preview of a pre-production sample. 
So there's not a lot of things that we can actually talk about because we haven't used all of it yet. Yeah, and I, I don't normally like to give a professional review. Until and, you. Unless I use yeah. it in a professional environment for a while. So yeah. not just one or two shoot, actually for a while. So you have to stay tuned for that particular video. Yeah, that will give you a more in-depth experience that I'm, you know, I can tell you about you yeah. know, from using the camera. But as it stands, mm -hmm. from all the features that I explore and compared to the Mark II that I actually use for four years professionally. Yeah. And then, uh, so I can say it's a definitely worth the update, you know, from... So out of five? I would say four and a half, four and a half, maybe 4.8. I don't know, you know, it's... it's Before it's, even using it full... It, like. It's going to be very, very tricky because there are a couple of things I personally think that uh, missing out. Perhaps, oh, okay. on the, perhaps on the video side, I mean, I would still like to see 4K60. Mm. I think probably that's the only wish I want. That's the only wish. Just, down. Just, just one Knocks thing. Just one thing that I really want is 4K60. So bring it up to five out yeah, of five. Yeah, that, that would definitely maybe six out of five. Actually, over five. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that 60 frames per second is very important. Okay. So. <laughs> and, and, you know, and I think it just gives me more frame rate to work with. Mm. If you do make films, you're just giving you a little bit of flexibility when it comes to filming and effects afterward. Yeah. And uh, but other than that, you know, in terms of photographically. It's five out of five photographically. I mean, I, I never ever disa yeah, disappoint with the photo capability mm. of this camera. Even the Mark II is still very capable today. Yeah, but it's the, not outdated. But the enhanced uh, autofocusing, like the face tracking and then things definitely, definitely blow your way, you know, blow yeah. your mind away. Definitely you know, brings it, it up, doesn't it? It's, yeah. it's definitely cool. And also that same autofocusing feature now works for video as well. That's why I think in terms of video, it's not shy. Depending on what sort of mm. usage you use, if you use all relying autofocus in video terms, this is actually probably the best if, you know, this is from it. what I've used so far, you know, it's definitely really And good. it's mine. <laughs> Just gonna take it away. Sorry, Olympus. And uh, <laughs> um, so overall, I, I, I think it's a great camera, great, update you know for sure um you just have to stay tuned for our long-term review in the future yeah we're booking tickets to norway for the starry skies right now yes yeah oh yeah that's one thing we haven't tried isn't it i don't know how feasible it is in england i'm gonna have to fly somewhere yeah yeah Definitely. iceland should we do iceland let's do it Island, Ice stay tuned stay tuned for iceland video yeah buy some more things so we can earn more money so we can afford sponsor the tickets us, there please. sponsor <laughs> us yes please Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you want to see more, then subscribe to me. And what? Red 35, obviously. Red 35 photography is what you should be subscribing to if you want to see <laughs> more videos like this. Yeah, and, and don't forget to check out our website. I'm going to put the link down in the descriptions and yeah, here somewhere. And uh, Red 35. Yeah, Red website. 35 will be here. Web, yeah, right here. Right here. And I will be here. You'll be, you'll be purple, purple mush. Okay, here. Purple mush. Jimmy Chang, Tracy Fong. Red 35, yeah, some, somewhere. We're going <laughs> to dot the whole entire screen with different links. <laughs> That's what Instagram would do. Like, it works. F lots of links, like, like 100,000 of them. It works. Yeah, you don't get turned off by that? No. Why? It's interesting. Interesting. Dynamic. Dynamic. Red 35, subscribe. Red 35, subscribe. Hit the bell notification as well if you want to see more of us. Ding! Five minutes later. What did you forget? Stabilization because this guy now can do as good as the M1X, which is now seven and a half stop when you use the Sync IS enable lens together. That's pretty good. Very good. So that so means if, you can do. If very you're laughing while you're filming or taking pictures, <laughs> that's exactly what Tracy was doing. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely right. Yeah, so you can do very long exposure shot for photos and have a very very stable video. Mm. Nice. Laugh away, Tracy. <laughs> Looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> that's the evil laugh. <laughs> okay, and what's the other thing? I think that's it. Kickstarter. Kickstarter, yes. I hate noisy trolleys. So I'm going to do Kickstarter, have silent wheel. Maybe a hovering trolley. Like a hover, hovering trolley, it doesn't touch yeah, the So yeah. our videos don't get ruined. Absolutely. And how many times we did the heavy stop? Too many. Too many times today. Now we must go eat sushi. Sushi it is. Sayonara. Sayonara, bitches. <laughs> <laughs>
literally connected. We are <laughs> friends. This is friendship. You know, this is an old school way of doing things, you know, everything wired, <laughs> <Sorry>. no wireless. <laughs> Welcome to Rep 35 and today we have a... Uh, <laughs> really? Oh, oh, <laughs> so you know how much we... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this kid is just... <laughs> uh, oh. Okay. <laughs> I didn't realize I was signing up for this kind of video, but go on. What? No, this is how I call it. <laughs> this is quite... <laughs> <laughs> Carry on, ignore me. So the nipple is very useful because you can yeah, use it as a focusing point selector, which is very, very <laughs> What is the car in front of me? <laughs> Thousands of tears later. Say nipple one more time. Oh. I'll be fine, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say nipple on that guy. <laughs> oh no. Okay. The nipple is good. The nipple is good, yes. You can hear it's very lovely. The change of guard music. That's not how they do it. That's a different. Oh. Uh. Yeah. It's a different guard. It's different. <laughs> That's his thinking face. Yes. This is awesome! <laughs> you okay, can. I'll sit here and you run. Go, 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 I'm tangled up. <laughs> what was I saying? So there's a lot of things that we can talk about. There's a lot of things that we haven't talked about yet because we haven't fully used the camera. No, and this is a pre-production sample. Mm -hmm. And I only had a short period of it with, you know. That was going so well. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you sure? Yeah. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Shit, I'm steaming right Stick now. Stick to the <laughs> Yep, go. <laughs> I would say, actually, I wouldn't say hi. Sorry. I was slow. One quick thing. <sighs> Let me sit down. <sighs> okay. Jimmy forgot. One thing. One thing. Actually, more than one thing. It's just stabilization. Yeah, let's let's get out of here in slow mo. Yeah, I can't move with that we, without with with, without we with tether. Without, yeah, without tether. With We're gonna have to walk like this together. Shit. <laughs> right. We're weird. <laughs> 